In today's video, I'm going to be putting the most expensive alcohol markers that I could find on Amazon against the cheapest markers that I could find on Amazon. And to give you some context, these ones, the Anart, are about 17p a marker, which if you've ever shopped for alcohol markers, is just insanely cheap. Now, these Pro markers, on the other hand, are about £1.50 a marker, which is just eye-wateringly humongous. And yeah, these are basically the top of the line ones, the best that you can get, or supposedly the best that you can get. And in today's video, we're gonna figure out if there is actually much difference between these two extreme price points. And to do this, I'm going to be drawing this BMW M3. I'm gonna be splitting it down the middle. And yeah, I reckon we should just get straight to it. So I started by splitting the sketch in half, and on the left hand side here, I'm going to be using the Windsor and Newton Pro Markers, you know, the really expensive ones. So anyway, I started by coming in with the black marker and just jotting in the really dark areas and being like particularly careful here, because any mistakes that I make are really hard to rectify, because there isn't like a marker in the set that is darker than it, so I can't actually exactly cover it up. And because it's ink, it's kind of permanent, so you can't rub it out either. And one thing I was also paying particular attention to was making sure that all the lines were really nice and crisp, and you're probably thinking that the bullet nib is best for this because obviously a marker comes with a bullet and also a chisel tip. But one thing I found is that if you use the chisel tip and you turn it around so you use that really sharp section there, um, the lines you can get with that are just so much thinner and like more precise than you could ever get with the bullet nib. And one thing, like another tip that I'd give you with alcohol markers is to always test the colors that you're using on like a scrap piece of paper before you come in and use them on your actual drawing. This way you're not left with like any nasty surprises when the color that you put down is slightly darker than what you think because oftentimes the color on the wrap isn't necessarily what you get, especially with these Windsor & Newton Pro markers. That's what I found. And that's kind of like one of their only downsides. And on the topic of like colors, I noticed that when doing this car, I didn't necessarily have the exact colors that I needed to get the color of the car and what I ended up having to do was mixing some of like the cyans with some of the blues and also with some of like the darker greens as well and that um, all together really helped to create the actual color of the car and the reason this worked so well is because like the Windsor & Newton Pro markers the just like the ink and like the tip it's just got so much like juiciness to it that like there's so much ink that can just like blend together and stuff and because the colors are so vibrant as well it's just such a cool experience to do and I really enjoyed um, creating this car and one thing that I also did for like the first time here is I used the colorless blender correctly for once and if you're wondering what that is it's basically an alcohol marker that doesn't have any pigment in the ink so it's basically a marker of just pure alcohol and what I usually use it for is blending away pencil grain because what you can do is it dissolves the pencil pigment and pushes it further into the um, grain of the paper but when you're using it with alcohol markers let's say you've got like an area where one's really dark the other's like quite um, much lighter but you don't necessarily want to use like another color in between or something what you can do is you can use that colorless blender just to blend it and it will kind of like um, I don't know how it works but it kind of like lightens up the kind of intersection between the two and it just creates a much smoother blend and particularly on like the windshield here and a bit later on the headlights I really used it to kind of like push the details within those areas backwards because obviously it's got like a glass film on it and I found that that was really helpful so yeah coming down to the headlight now you can kind of see that how I was just talking about the limited amount of details that you can pick up with the um, pro markers it was kind of showing through and basically what I then had to do was I came back the next day after having a nice little sleep with fresh eyes to kind of like pick up on other some other stuff and basically what I did is I thought you know what screw it instead of just using markers I'm going to come in with a white paint pen and I used a paint pen by Posca just to add in all those details and especially around the headlight and stuff just to um add in all like the individual sections and stuff because everything was starting to become a bit of a mess in those headlights and yeah I found that this really helped to just crisp everything up so there you go this took around five to six hours to complete, I think. And I'm super happy with how it um, has turned out, especially considering that I never normally do detailed markers. I usually do like a base layer for colored pencils to go on top of. But yeah, with that said, let's see what the cheap pencils can do. So I haven't actually even opened these markers yet. I don't even know what they look like. So we're just gonna open them live on camera now. So do, 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 do. And oh my goodness, look at all the colors. I'm a bit concerned that there isn't very many greens. Oh dear, this could be, <laughs> This could be a challenge. <laughs> oh, all right, anyway. So, nice Anart marker. So we have our chisel tip and we have our bullet nib too. So yeah, 
Let's get testing. So after having used the markers, I want to take back that remark I just made because on closer inspection, there was actually quite a few greens. In fact, the greens in this set were actually closer to the color of the car than what was with the Windsor & Newton Pro Marker set. And yeah, before I dive into like talking a bit more about the colors, I just wanna say that I obviously started in the same way using like the black marker to outline all the darker sections. And it was here that I immediately saw the biggest difference between the cheaper and the more expensive markers. You see, when you put the cheaper markers down, they tended to bleed just a tad more than what the more expensive ones did. So by which I mean when you put the marker down, they just kind of couldn't go as fine and like as precise as what those more expensive ones can do. And like I was saying um, earlier in terms of like using the chisel tip to get those really nice lot of sharp lines, you couldn't quite do this with the cheaper markers because they would bleed just a bit more. However, after using them for a bit, you kind of get used to this and it doesn't tend to be much of a problem. It's just something good to be aware of. So now I've got some moaning and groaning out the way. Let's move on to like the actual good parts about these markers. Now, if I'm being honest, I was pleasantly surprised about how vibrant the colors are actually were. If you can see here the difference between obviously the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones right next to each other, there isn't actually that much difference between the color vibrancy. It's just kind of, I think time will tell in terms of like how it maintains the color vibrancy because one thing that like the more expensive pigments will have is that they should maintain that color for a lot longer than what the cheaper ones do. So you'll probably find that after a while, the cheaper ones, they'll start to fade a bit. And yeah, I don't really know this for sure, but time will tell. Now on the topic of blending, these cheaper markers were actually pretty good at blending as well. The gradients between the darker and the lighter areas, they were pretty smooth. And obviously I was using lots of layers just like I did with the Promarker ones. And one thing that I did notice, unfortunately, is that the paper did start to warp a bit more than it did with the more expensive ones. And I don't know whether this is down to maybe they put some like impurities within the ink. So maybe some like water to buff it out. And this causes the paper to like crinkle and things, but it wasn't like too severe. It was just like a really minor downside. But yeah, just something to be aware of. Another thing that was slightly annoying about these markers is the fact that they didn't have any like light grays within the color selection. So you can see here on like the registration plates, how I had to use like a skin tone opposed to like the light grays that I would usually use because they just didn't have them. The lightest gray that they had was like a cool gray three. And on the topic of like the grays they had, they had like a greeny gray. They also had a bluey gray. And this is kind of like really cool in terms of like keeping the color saturation of like these supposedly darker areas up. So they don't look dull in comparison to the rest of the piece. And yeah, just having that color within those shadows um, just really helps to make it pop. Now it's all very well and good me standing here saying that the pro markers are much better than what the ANOT markers are. And let's be honest, what did you expect? The ANOT markers are literally 17p per marker, whereas the pro markers are £1.50, almost 10 times the price. And if I'm being honest, I don't think that the results are 10 times better. So would you say that the pro markers are overpriced or would you say that the ANOT markers are underpriced? So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed watching me put the most expensive alcohol markers I could find on Amazon against the cheapest ones. And I'd be interested to hear which one you prefer down in the comments. And if you'd like to have a play around with either of these markers, I'll leave them down in the description as well. And yeah, with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall see you in the next one. So keep drawing and I shall see you there.